Well, I have a, a Scottish friend who's the producer of this film, who, who was aware of the book, Carlos's autobiography, No Way Home, which is a terrific read, and uh, she suggested that we read it. And then we, we liked the book, and she suggested we meet Carlos. And, uh, and he was very modest and bright and funny, and we weren't very sure if we could find a way into this, so me and Athea said we would go and join him on a trip to Cuba. And that's what happened. And is that then how the formation of the script started? Because it's, it, it, it is told in narrative mm -hmm. as well as introducing the story through and told through dance as well. So is that where that... Yeah, the, I mean, first was the book, which is a lot of the facts and the, and, the, and the basics for the story. But then this trip to Cuba, we saw him actually was there with his company, the company which plays in the film which is an amazing, talented group of, of dancers. And it was watching them in their work, in their rehearsal, when the idea came across of why don't break this narrative. And instead of just being the usual scene after scene in a biopic, biopics are a bit dangerous. They can be a bit flat. So, so, so Paul was great at, at trying to think, let's break the narrative. Let's make something different. We are talking about a dancer. Why not dance and use all this talent, which is there? And also, there is something I really like about bringing the present. is It's a very vibrant moment for Cuba now, and Carlos is one of these um, uh, young, young, young people who want to give back what they were given, and he's based his his company there. And though we are in the th in the theater, we have a sense, a smell of of this present of Cuba, which is which is promising, and is and is who knows, but, uh, but Carlos w wanted to be part of it. So so that visit to Cuba, that first visit, gave us the idea of bringing all this in, in the film. And was it interesting for you when, you know, because for me, watching the film and seeing how those routines and the choreography really heighten our emotional attachment and awareness, you know, we're, we're so used to mm. verbal dialogue being a way of, of, of our mm. expressing ourselves, mm. but, but using dance to, to mm. amplify Yes, the emotion um, was that something that surprised you both, really? Um, <laughs> well, it was. Um, well, it was a bit, you know, because I think you're dead right, and that, that was, was beautiful about seeing just human dance and the form and music, it, and it can be mass it can be brilliantly suggestive and contradictory, you know, and so it can just, you know, we can just, it can just, you know, how do you dance fame? How do you dance that you know he was a, a young man coming from Cuba and he's up in the states and. And suddenly he's got money, and all these women want to be to be with him. How do you do that? You know, and uh, how do you dance loneliness? You know, how do you dance that, that kind of that, that fear and that longing? How do you dance the contradictions of loving your dad but hating the bastard? You know, so the great thing about dance and the human body is it can be mass, mass, massively suggestive. But I think the trick really, and what we bet the bet was, you know, to have the full expression of dance in all its beauty, in all its grandeur, in all its athleticism, but at the same time give a hint towards the story so you could catch on to something and that would inform and um, and reflect against the, the more traditional narrative. And it would, in respects to directing that then, mm -hmm. you know, where you can work with mm -hmm. your actors, do take after take to get what you want, because of the power and the, and the intensity and the physical demands of mm -hmm. that kind of performance, did you then have to be very mindful of not pushing your mm -hmm. act, those, those performers too hard? Yes, uh, the I mean, well, dancers are they have an amazing discipline, and uh, for every we did the choreographies beforehand the shoot. I travelled with the choreographer, which is, is the, Carlos couldn't do it, so so I did it with a with a choreographer Maria Rovira. So we travelled together twice to Cuba to put together the choreographies, and then they were prepared for the shoot. And once you are shooting, I mean, you cannot go take after take and exhaust them because because it's so physical. And the dancers could go along with a lot, but Carlos, because his scenes were particularly emotional, he just couldn't take that long. So I remember there is one particular one when, they, when, when he reproduced his dad's beating. He plays his dad, and after three takes, he came and says, I cannot do it anymore. I mean, it's, it's physically and emotionally straining. And then says, Carlos, please, I don't have it all. I mean, I, I need more <laughs> material. Can you just do it last one time? So we made this deal. And this is the one that is actually in the film because he, he, he went into a kind of a cathartic. But, but you do have to balance. You need emotion, but how much can you um, push, uh, push? And also something as raw for Carlos as remembering a beating like that, playing his dad, doing the beating. 
it was all very, very charged and very powerful. But that's the beauty. I mean, he, I think he was very brave. He went for it and then we got an amazing material. And uh, interestingly enough, with, with, with his father, there's a heroism really mm -hmm. about his father. Did you want to, to bring that into the script? Well, you can't demonise him. That, that he, mm -hmm. he was pushing his son because he had faith in him, really. Yeah, and also, but you must remember too, he was, he'd had an incredibly tough experience himself. You know, he went to work at the age of nine. He was a lorry driver. There was tremendous pressures against the black population, especially before the revolution. They were beaten up by the police they went to the cinema. He was a grandson of a slave. It was that close. So um, he knew how tough life was, you know? He knew there was great prejudice, and he wanted his son to be the best dancer in the world. So it's a remarkable contradiction. Absolutely.